Welcome to the Believe in Limia podcast with Rodney DeFreitas, registered nutritional health specialist. Hi, everyone. I am Lori Ann. I am the host of Bleep Alimia. And today I'm so pleased to have my longtime friend, uh, Rodney DeFreitas. He's a registered nutritional health specialist, weight management coach, and 30 years plus personal trainer. And he was also a former national level gymnast. Thank you so much for being here, Rodney. Rory, it's always a pleasure to meet you, whether it's in person or on Zoom. You know, I mean, you and I go way, way back. You know, we so. do. Yeah, so it's always a pleasure to uh, to do things with you and collaborate with you. So today we were going to talk about mindset. I know that we're limited in time, so I really want to get into this. Um, let me first ask, like, what is your take on all of that, on mindset? So let's open that discussion up. Um, well, you know, in, in for me, you know, mindset is the most important thing in everything you do for success you know your 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 mind is the most powerful organ in terms of becoming successful so whatever you feed it it will give it right back to you for example um have you ever been driving uh or walking somewhere and you see this most amazing car and you go wow that's a nice car i would love to have that car and then all of a sudden you start seeing that car everywhere you go. Well, it could, it could be, it doesn't have to be a car, it can be anything, right? But you, you, get, the, you get the picture. Um, the thing is, your mind took that information and started to subconsciously seek out which that, which, what, you, what you most desire. But here's the thing, your mind can't distinguish between the positive and the negative. It'll give you whatever you feed it. No, whatever comes out of your mouth or whatever you feed your brain is going to come back to you. That's just a law of attraction. You know, for example, uh, let me give let me give you a few examples. Um, you know, we all hear, you know, some women go, ah, all men are dogs, right? Well, that's all you're going to meet, right? Or, you know, I'm never going to lose this weight. Well, you're absolutely right. Or you could say, you know, I'm going to get fit and healthy this year. You know, that's a very strong possibility. Or I'll never be rich. You know what? I promise you, you won't. Or I'm going to be rich one day. Um, that's going to be a strong possibility. You know, that's how it works. Like I said before, it's a lot of attraction. The moment you say it, you begin to change. It's just a process. You know, if you think big, you'll be big. If you think small, you'll be small. You see, I always say everything in life has a formula. You can't learn to ride a horse by reading a book. And you can't jump out of an airplane with an umbrella and expect to be successful. And all that starts right up here. Okay. So you have to work on your positive self-talk every day. Okay. And I always say too, is surround yourself with positive people um, and people who are already where you want to be. And you know what? Just watch how the growth will happen. That's true. You know, that's, that's, that, that's a lot of my, my take on, on the mindset. And you're right about the self-talk. I mean, I sometimes even hear myself say, oh, Lorianne, you're, you're, you're so um, like, like you're an idiot or something like a word like that comes into play. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah, yeah. I am so acutely aware of it now, but at one time I just used to talk and people talk to themselves that way. I'm going, no, you're not. Don't be mean to yourself. Like I'll have this other little voice going, you know, mm -hmm. smarten up. But at least I'm aware of it, whereas at one time I wasn't. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like you have, you know, the, the negative person here sitting on your shoulder and the positive person here sitting yeah. on your shoulder. But a lot of people brush off the positive person and just listen to the negative person. Yes. Right. Um, case in point, I had a um, one of my one of my clients. I mean, she's she does she's doing an amazing job in, in terms of, of weight management. Um, she's one of my superstars. But I had to do a lot of um, uh, rewiring of her mind and, and you know conditioning of her mind um, because her mindset didn't match match you know her 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 goals. So for example, um, you know she lost quite a bit a lot of weight and you know she's looking great. She's working out. You know she's she's fitting into her clothes and everything, and she loves to dance. You know so. Um, she goes to this fa her, her favorite bar where everyone knows her and they all dance or whatever. And it's all salsa and merengue and, you know, that sort of thing. And um, one guy came up to her and said, you know, you're looking too skinny. 
And that threw her for a loop. And then all the way home, you know, she goes, oh, am, am I losing too much weight? Um, what, what, what should I do? And all of a sudden, her mind started going in, down the rabbit hole. And next thing you know, she's eating donuts. She's eating all these foods that put back on the weight. Luckily, she called me the very next day. Um, and, you know, we had a session and, you know, I, I had to explain to her, you know, he's just trying to, you know, put you down because he himself was quite, is it was quite a bit overweight, right? So it could possibly be that he was jealous that she was losing the weight. Yeah. And, you know, so you're going to get these, you're going to get these, you're going to get these yeah. negative people sitting on your shoulder going, blah, 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 yeah. right? Right. Yeah. Um, so we did, you know, we did some kind of like, uh, kind of, um, reframing how she takes the outside things coming in, how to reframe that, right? Yeah. And then she went, you know, she went back to the club the next, the next, uh, next week. The guy said it, said it to her again, and she just looked him in the eyes and she went, "Well, it's a good thing I'm not you, then, huh?" <laughs> right. So she just reframed it, and yeah. then she was able to handle it with confidence. Right. Yes. And then she called me on the way home from the club. She goes, oh, my God, Rodney, it worked. This is fantastic. Right. So <laughs> it's all about reframing, you know, certain things and, and conditioning your mind and feeding your mind with positive things. Right. Because like I said before, your mind, your mind can't tell the positive or the negative because whatever you give it, it's going to feed it right back to you. Right. Mm -hmm. So if, as long as you keep give, giving your mind positive things, that's what it's going to give you back. When, when people say, why does all this kind of stuff happen to me? Well, because it's all you think about, right? That's all you think about. So that's what you're going to attract into your life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, um, well, we were talking before this that, uh, and I brought it up in another um, podcast, but it's a movie that I watched with um, The Rock and Kevin Hart, and I think it's called Intelligence. Yes, where I saw we're that talking one. about the mindset, right? Where he's um, he's going through and he doesn't want to go back to his high school reunion because he was a very large person. Then he got fit, but every time he looked in the mirror, he saw that overweight teenager, um, not the fit guy. Um, and then at the end of it, he changes his mindset, which is awesome. But we're talking about that too. Like we're talking with me with when I was bulimic, I was slim. But when I looked in the mirror, I couldn't see it, right? And right, right, right. now I've changed my mindset. Like I've been, it's going to be actually, what is it, 2011? So 13 years in February coming up, I'm going nice. to be, you're right? And I look, I don't, I don't have that anymore. I look and I'm going, you know what? I look damn good for six, coming on 62 in about two weeks, like, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I, because I say it to myself, I feel it and- um, and it's such a different thing. And as far as weight management, um, so many bulimics are so afraid to give that up because they're fearing that weight management. They think they're going to gain weight. I have been 13 years at the same weight, plus or minus five pounds and without yeah. dieting, you know, eating yeah. healthy, but without yeah. dieting, I don't diet. If I want a piece of pizza, I'll have one. If I want a piece of chocolate, I'll have one. Exactly. Because it's a lifestyle, right? Yes. So if, if, there, if people people have that 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 um, diet, it, you know, it's it's a diet diet. And think, look at the first three letters of the word diet. What does it spell? Die. Die. Right. Yeah. So yeah, their diets don't work. So you have to create a lifestyle, right? Um, when you create a lifestyle, I always say, you know, when when you when you te when you give someone a fish, you feed them for a day. When you teach someone the fish, you feed them for a lifetime, mm. right? So as long as as long as it's all about education and feeding your brain the right information, you know, it's not about the quick fix. Think about how long someone's been eating unhealthy and then they want to lose fifty pounds or or, or you know in 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 a month. No, it's unrealistic, right? Yeah. So as long as you have the education and you know what you're doing and why you're doing it then that's when it becomes sustainable, right? And you know, you, you're living the lifestyle. So if you want to have a piece of pizza, that's great. Knock yourself out, enjoy it, savor it. Right. right? Because you know that's not part of the lifestyle. Yeah. So 
I had a, I had a, I had a piece of pizza a couple of days ago, right? I, I and I and I loved it. I, I and I know this is not part of my lifestyle. And tomorrow I get right back on track to do my healthy eating. You know, so yeah, you don't have to be you know so hard on yourself and don't don't also don't put so much emphasis on the scale right because i never weigh myself you said you never weigh yourself either right i never weigh myself but i know whenever i do maybe once every four or five six months yeah. i'm within two to three pounds of of you know of, of where i am right and people put too much emphasis on the scale I always, I always tell my clients, you have to realize that muscle dictates metabolism, right? But five pounds of muscle will be like this. Yeah. Five pounds of fat will be like this. Yeah. Right. So you can have someone who is, let's say, 130 pounds at 30% body fat and someone at 130 pounds at 15% body fat. And their body composition will be completely different. Yes. The one at 15% body fat will be, will be wearing a lot smaller size clothes than the one at 30% body fat, but they weigh the same amount of weight, right? So don't put the emphasis on the scale. Think about and look at and focus on how do you feel? Yeah. How are your clothes fitting? What's your energy like? How are yeah. you now sleeping at night? Are all those getting better and improving? Those are the key factors you want to look at, not the scale. Because when you're losing weight or increase or, or working on on you know managing your weight, um, you know sometimes as you're doing that process, your body will challenge you every now and again. You might step on the scale and you might weigh a pound or two heavier one day. Right. That could be because you're working out and you're increasing lean muscle tissue as you're decreasing body fat. Right. That could yeah. be one way as well. Another uh, possibility is that maybe you drank a little bit more water one day or ate a little bit more one day. So there's all these different factors that 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 would make you gain the, on the scale, gain a little bit weight. Right. But even climate. Yeah exactly yeah climate as because well if it's that, hot that you retain water if it's yes. cool you get right so there's like there's so many factors in that yeah and you're right the scale does not is not the telltale no no it's not yeah. now i would tell people you you have to don't try and be the weight you were in high school no. you know because as we age our body our hormones change, our body changes, things start to slow down a little bit, you know? So we have to learn to be the best version of ourselves, whatever, whatever that may be, right? Yeah. If, you know, if you have the energy and you're sleeping better and, and your clothes are fitting better, you're looking better and you feel great about yourself, perfect. Stay there, yeah. right? Um. That my the the, the client I, I was talking about um, who likes to dance and you know um, she had a certain goal right um, and based on her on her age and how much weight she wanted to lose um, and her height as well uh, I knew that was a little bit too kind of lofty of a goal for her to achieve but I didn't tell her because I wanted her to experience it for herself because if I told her then it wouldn't have meant anything. Right. Yeah. But if she's going through the process and then she's seeing, you know, and we, we and I said, you know, wait till we get down to, you know, we're great. We're, she started off, I think, one, uh, 150 and her, her goal weight was 130. Right. Um, and then I said, and halfway through, I know I kept on saying, how do you feel? How do you feel? How are your clothes fitting? Again, we're not looking at the scale, maybe like once every two weeks, we'll jump on the scale just as reference kind of thing. And um, she got down to 135 and she felt fantastic, but she stalled out at 135. She couldn't get down to 130. And I told her that's because, you know, we, our, our body is slowing down. Our body is aging, right? So you, you might not, if, if you go down to 130, you won't be your healthiest version of yourself today. 130 might've been 25 years ago, but it's not your healthiest version now. 135 is your healthiest version now. Right. And then so she stuck at 135. So I gave her then a meal plan to keep her at 135. 
And, you know, then, then she, she just loves it because she has that energy and everything's working for her. Now. I believe that. And I believe your body knows the weight that it's comfortable at and it's going to maintain it. If you eat healthy, yeah. it's going to maintain it. It won't, it, 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 it just does. It's so weird. Cause that's how I felt too. Like I actually, believe it or not, I had, a, um, and I wasn't trying because I was just happy to be off my bulimia. Uh, but I actually lost 13 pounds because my body adjusted to it. And after that 13 pounds, like that's, like I said, in the last 13 years over time, I have not, I've not gained or lost other than like the odd, like you said, the, the different ones, which I really don't care about. Um, but it maintained. And, uh, so my body found its comfort zone and, and that's what I call it. Right. Yeah. And how did you find that? You, you 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 had to change your mindset over the whole process, yeah. right? Yeah. You had to change your mindset on, on how you viewed yourself. Yes. And how and what was healthy for you. And how I viewed food. Like I You're, love yes. it. It's so nice because quantity for me is very big. Um, and how fast I eat. So I slowed down my eating. And I know that there was Joan Borskin's co, and I think I bring her up a lot in my podcast, but that book was wonderful. And the main thing was eat slow because it takes 20 minutes for you to know when you're full. Yeah. And so, and, and the thing is when you eat slow, you're savoring your food, you're enjoying it and you're paying attention to it. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> I have a very different relationship with my food now. And I get excited when I'm actually feeling like something and I sit there and it's in front of me and I thank God for it being there. You know, it's like, yeah. 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 Um, it's true. Your relationship with food is so, so important. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I always tell my clients when you're eating out, I always, I teach them how to eat, eat healthy out as well. Um, yeah. Good, a, a good tip what I teach them is, is before you go to the restaurant, um, look at the menu online and choose what you're going to have prior to getting to the restaurant. Because when you get to the restaurant, you know, you all, all your friends and guests that you're, that's with you are going to influence what you eat because they're choosing, I'm going to have pizza. I'm going to have this. I'm going to have that. I'm going to have the hamburger and fries. Right. But if you choose, if you choose what you're going to have at the beginning and always ask yourself the question, feed your brain, always ask yourself the question, what will benefit me the most? See, when you give your, when you ask your brain your, yourself the right questions, it's going to give it back to you. So all of a sudden your, your, your eyes are going to start focusing on what will benefit me the most. And you're going to looking for that. What will benefit me? Ah, here we go. The, the, the grilled calamari with the salad. Awesome. I love calamari. That's what I'm going to have. Right. Yeah. So you get to the restaurant. Everyone's going hamburger, fries, pizza, whatever. I'll have the grilled calamari, please, because you've already decided prior to. And you're asking yourself your question: What would benefit me the most? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's funny too, because that's the other mindset that it's changed very much with me too. Is what would ben benefit me the most? Um, I'm not really big on chocolate or anything like that, but I do like my odd piece of chocolate, um, and I'll have it. But sometimes it's just because, right? And I sit there and go, really, Lorian, what could you have that you still really love that would be more healthy and beneficial to my body? Yeah. So like a granola bar, like it's sweet, it's nice, and it's and it's it's healthier. Um, and that's not being so diet, I think, unfortunately, it is a true word. It's been bastardized as far as I'm concerned, because diet is what you eat. I mean, you have, it is. right. It's like, you've got people who have diabetes. They have a special diet. They have to follow. That's yes. a diet, but yes. the media, social, like social media and media in general, way back in the eighties turned that to being yep. lose weight. It's not, it's what it's you sustain. Very true. Prime example. Let's look at the animal kingdom. What does a lion eat? Right. Meat. That's the lion's diet. diet. That's what it eats for the rest of its life. Yep. Four or five months down the road, diet, the, the lion's not going to say, hmm, you know what? I think I'm going to be a vegetarian now. Right. And turn and turn turn to, turn to eat, right? And the same thing like a giraffe. A giraffe's an herbivore. It eats vegetation. It's not going to say, hmm, you know what? Looking a little skinny. I think I'll start packing on some pounds with some meat. Right. No, it doesn't. No, that's <laughs> that's the diet for the rest of their lives, yeah. right? And like like you said, 
the the all the marketers out there, the, the big companies that want, you know, they they throw they they, they twisted the meaning of the word diet, yeah. right? The meaning yeah. to lose weight, and and yeah, they they bastardized it, yeah. you know, and that's why we say lifestyle now, yeah, right? because because we there's there's no way we can ever get diet the word diet back to where it used to be, no, right? So we have to find some some way else to kind of another word meaning or word to to get across our point, and which is yeah. perfect with lifestyle. Yeah, that's beautiful. So, Rodney, I know that uh, you have to leave us, but I just wanted to make sure that people um, let our listeners know where they can find you. Sure, sure. Um, you can find me on Facebook. Just look up uh, Rodney DeFreitas, R-O-D-N-E-Y-D-E-F-R-E-I-T-A-S. Um, you'll see me wearing a blue shirt. <laughs> That'll be me. Right. Um, and on Instagram, it'll be the same thing, at Rodney DeFreitas. Beautiful. Yeah. And one last thing before we go, I did love your post the other day on Instagram, uh, the one that said, there is no you versus someone else, it's you versus yourself. It is. Love yeah. that. So if you go Thank on you. his Instagram, look that one up because, and then you said, read it again. And I read it again. And it truly is. You are, you're, you're, you compete only against yourself. That's it. To a better version of yourself every day yes exactly right. it's you versus you don't 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 try and blame other people or other outside forces because it's you versus you at the end of the day it's you that have to take action to make you the best version of yourself beautiful thank you so much for being here today really appreciate rodney Great. thank you we talk soon take care bye-bye thank you for listening to this episode be sure to visit me at bleepbulimia.com